الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدْيِ هَدْيِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمٍ And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضلالة. And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have a hadith of our Prophet ﷺ where he guided us that we should balance our deen with our dunya. عن حنظلة المسيدي قال وكان من كتاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لقيني أبو بكر فقال كيف أنت يا حنظلة قال قلت نافق حنظلة قال سبحان الله ما تقول قال قلت نكون عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكرنا بالنار والجنة حتى كأن رأي عين فإذا خرجنا من عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عافسنا الأزواج والأولاد والضيعات فنسينا كثيرا قال أبو بكر فوالله إنا لننقى مثل هذا الحمد لله سيدي and he was one of the scribes of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, I met Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr asked me, how are you? So I replied to him, Nafaka Hamdala. Hamdala has become or turned to be a hypocrite. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, Subhanallah, what are you saying? Thereupon he said, I say that when we're in the company of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and we ponder over Jahannam, over the hellfire, or over Jannah, paradise, as if we're seeing them with our own eyes. And this is the level of their iman when they're with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And when we're away from him, we attend to our wives, we attend to our children, we attend to our business. And most of these things pertaining to the akhirah, to the hereafter, they slip out of our minds. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, by Allah, this is the first best in this ummah after the Prophet sallallahu He said, by Allah, I experienced the same thing. That when he's with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're thinking about Jannah and Jahannam as if they're in front of you, but other than that, you tend to your worldly affairs. فَانْتَلَقْتُ أَنَا وَأَبُو بَكْرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا حَتَّى دَخَلْنَا عَلَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قُلْتُ نَافَقَ حَمْضَلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَمَا ذَاكَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ ن تذكرنا بالنار والجنة حتى كأن رأي عين فإذا خرجنا من عندك عافسنا الأزواج والأولاد والضيعات نسينا كثيرا. So I and Abu Bakr, الحمد لله said I and Abu Bakr رضي الله عنهما, we went to Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and said, Hamdullah has become a hypocrite. He has turned to be a hypocrite. 
Thereupon Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, What has happened to you? What are you saying? He said, O oh Allah's Messenger وسلم, when we're in your company and we're reminded of the hellfire and of paradise as if we see them with our own eyes. And, uh, but whenever we go away, we attend to our wives, we attend to our children, we attend to our business. And much of these things go out of our minds. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِلَّا تَدُومُونَ عَلَى مَا تَكُونُونَ عِنْدِي وفي, وَفِي الذِّكْرِ لَصَافَحَتْكُمْ الْمَلَائِكَ عَلَى فُرِشِكُمْ وَفِي طُرِقِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَا حَمْضَ لَهِ سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً وَقَالَهَا ثلاث, ثلاث مرات Thereupon Allah's Messenger وسلم, said by the one in whose hand is my soul, is my life, if your state of mind remains the same as it is in my presence, and you are always busy in the remembrance of Allah, then the angels, they will shake hands with you in your beds and in your pathways. But alhamdulillah, time should be devoted for the worldly affairs and time should be given, devoted to Allah, to your ibadah, to prayer and the likes of this. And he said it three times. Time for your dunya, for your worldly affairs. Time for your ibadah. Time for your dunya, time for your ibadah. Time for your dunya, time for your ibadah. And this hadith is sahih in the collection of Imam Muslim. This hadith highlights some points of reflection on what and where we spend our time, our energy and our wealth for of this dunya. And it should also make us reflect where our time and our energy and our wealth goes for the sake of Allah, what we put in for our akhirah, towards that eternal next life. What are you doing with your time? How is it devoted to the dunya? And what are you doing for Allah, for this deen? And how is it devoted to Allah? Is there a balance or is it lopsided? I think it's really easy for us to say that none of us put into, none of us put into the time for Allah, for our Lord, for the creator of the heavens and the earth, for the one whose pleasure and mercy we need in order to enter Jannah. Nearly we, what we put into the worldly matters. And Allah didn't ask us to sit in the masajid 24-7. <coughs> he didn't ask us to only make dhikr. He didn't ask us to only go in the path of Allah, yani specifically with your ibadah, that it's 24-7, fast every day, pray all night, and the likes of these matters. Allah did not ask us of this. But there should be a balance, which is why we're commanded to ask for good in this life and the next. We're not supposed to just ask for good in the akhirah, nor should we just ask for good in this life. فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولَ رَبَّنَا آتَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ Allah says what means, but of mankind, there are some who say, O oh our Lord, give us bounties, give us blessings and provisions in this world, and for such there will be no portion in after, hereafter. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ And of them are there, there are some who say, O oh our Lord, give us good in this world, and give us good in the akhirah and the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. So you should ask for good in both, and you should strive to do good for both, for this dunya and for the akhirah. Allah says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتُ الْقَامَةُ الْكُبَرَةً but when there comes the great catastrophe, the day of recompense, the day, the day of questioning, the day of terror, for many people, may Allah protect us from it. <laughs> that day, man shall remember what he strove for. <laughs> and hellfire will be made apparent to him in full view for everyone who sees. <laughs> As for him who taga, who, dis- who went beyond the boundaries that Allah set, for them in disbelief, in oppression, in evil deeds, disobedience to Allah, wa athar al hayat al dunya, and they preferred the life of this dunya over the life of the akhirah. For in al jahim hi al ma'wa, then for this person, al jahim, the hellfire will be his or her abode. Wa amma man khaf maqam rabbihi wa nahi al nafs an al hawa. But as for him who feared the standing before Allah, believed in it, and feared Allah. Uh, him standing before Allah and being questioned about what he did in this life or what she did in this life and restrained himself from his desires, his evil desires and lusts. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Verily paradise will be his or her abode. So do not be foolish my brothers and sisters in Islam. 
Do not prefer this life over the next. It's not saying totally renounce this life to, to a level of يعني, all day worship, all night worship, and you neglect other people's rights. Do not prefer this life over the next one, but truly ask Allah for good in both of them. But to be fair, then in all honesty, that means balancing both. That means balancing. If you're going to give time to your dunya, keep a track schedule of how many minutes, hours, days you give to this dunya, and keep another track record of what you give to Allah. Even your prayers count them, and you will find that the balance is severely imbalanced, distorted to say the least. Six hours of sleep, eight hours of work, eight hours on mobile devices, entertainment, hanging out with a friend, social media, and you leave the scrap, the loose time, the junk for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without a doubt, you can give time to the dunya matters, especially with what was enjoined by Allah. And again, He's not asking you to do everything. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اِكْلَفُوا مِنَ الْعَمَلِ مَا تُطِيقُونَ فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْعَمَلِ أَدْوَمُهُ وَإِنْقَلِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in this hadith, which is sahih in the sunnah of Ibn Majah, he said, take on, take on only as much as you can do of the good deeds. Do good deeds, do as much as you can. And many of us, we fool ourselves, I'm doing as much as I can, no. When you're spending hours, hours, hours on social media or video games or the likes of these matters, even for the adults, you're not doing as much as you can for Allah. Do as much as you can of the good deeds for the best deeds which you do are the ones that are consistently done even if they're a little. Even if they're a little. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he said that Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Ya Abdullah, أَلَمْ أُخْبَرْ أَنَّكَ تَصُومَ النَّهَارُ وَتَقُومَ اللَّيْلِ قُلْتُ بَلَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ فَلَا تَفْعَلْ سُمْ وَأَفْتِرْ وَقُمْ وَنَمْ فَإِنَّ لِجَسَدِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَإِنَّ لِعَيْنَكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَإِنَّ لِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَفِي رواية في صحيح البخاري وَإِنَّ لِنَفْسِكَ حَقَّ وَلِأَهْلِكَ حَقَّ this hadith which we mentioned, there's two versions that may mention something similar, both from Sahih al-Bukhari. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he, said, he was with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, Oh Abdullah, have I, not been, have, have I not been informed that you fast all the day and you stand up the whole night in prayer? So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, he said, Yes, bala ya Rasulullah, yes, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many of us, again, the thinking, standing up all the night in prayer, such a great action of struggle, of jihad, to please your Lord, to earn His mercy. To fast every day. The siyam, Allah said, فَإِنَّهُ لِي It's for me, it's the one thing you can do for Allah that is purely for Him. Right? But what did He say to him? He responded to him, do not do that. Observe the fast sometimes and eat sometimes. Pray the night sometimes and sleep some of the time. Your body, it has a right over you. Your eyes have a right over you. And in this hadith it mentions, your wife has a right over you. Many of the wives, they're neglected of their husband's time. The wife didn't marry you so that she could just look after your home. The wife many times wants a companion, someone to talk to, someone to vent to, someone to take a walk with. And many times these simple basic rights are denied of the women. And in this case, you are oppressing, this is dhulm that you are oppressing your wife with. Basic things. In another narration, it mentioned, no doubt your body has a right over you and your family has a right over you. Many children who don't see their parents, their father, for days, especially the boys, the young men, and even the girls who want their father figure in their life. Where is the father? Many times out with the friends, out doing business. That's fine, it's understandable. But there's no balance in that. Where's the rights for the children, the family? They have a right over you. Spend time with them. Go to the park with them. Go out to eat with them, whatever it may be. But balance those matters and those affairs. Allah said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت. Allah says that Allah does not burden a person beyond his scope. He gets the reward for the good he's earned and he's punished for the evil he has earned. So none of what Allah has asked us to do is too much. But at the same time, I want us to look at the flip side. 
You know your situation won't change till you change yourself. We would be foolish to think that my situation will change if I'm just sitting on my couch and I want something different to happen in my life. It doesn't work like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah says, what means verily, Allah will not change the good condition of a people as long as they do not change the state of goodness that they are in by committing sin and by being ungrateful, by being disobedient. And the opposite is true. If people find themselves in hardship, in a bad situation, an evil situation, until you change that evil, why should you expect that your condition should change? We had and have currently still, we're in this pandemic. And it was supposed to be a wake-up call. Sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allowed to do what it's doing across the earth, taking lives of those who are healthy and young at the blink of an eye or the snap of a finger. But it was people not taking anything seriously as if Allah is not in charge, or that He can't make anything happen, everything happen or disappear. Look how everything was taken away in the blink of an eye. And it should remind us all that Allah, who ala kulli shayin qadir, Allah is capable of all things. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we as humans who think we're so intellectual and come up with these high-rise buildings and these big machines and cars and planes, we can't even create a fly, a little fly. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, durba mathanun fastam'u lah, inna alladheena tad'oona min duni Allah, lan yakhluqu dhubaban walaw ijtam'u lah, wa in yaslubhum. الذباب 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 شيئا لا يستن لا يستنقذه منه ضعف الطالب والمطلوب. Allah says what means O mankind a similitude has been coined for you so listen to it carefully. Verily those who you call upon besides Allah they can't even create a fly. They can't even create a fly. This little insignificant annoying creature they cannot even create it even though they combine together for that purpose. And if that fly snatched something away, they could not have no power to release it from the fly. So weak are both the seeker and the sought. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we are being asked. We're not being asked to do something that is major. We were supposed to pray 50 times a day, it got down to five. For us to give zakat on our wealth, only if we have it. If you live month to month, you don't pay it. To fast Ramadan, only if you can. If you're physically capable of doing it and it wouldn't harm you, then you do so. To make hajj in your lifetime once, if you can do so, physically, financially, and the likes of this. Yet we forget that we're the ones who need Allah. We're the ones who need to call upon Him when we're afraid, when we're in need. And then, the minute that we think things are good, the minute that we think we're not afraid anymore, the minute that we think we do not need Him, then we forget Allah. As the ayah mentions about those who are in the middle of the sea and the ocean, and hardship comes to them, and then all of a sudden, Allah rescues them. In that hardship, they remember Allah. But when they're rescued, then Allah is the last thing on their mind. Allah says, وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الدُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَنْ تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاكُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ أَعْرَدْتُمْ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ كَفُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means, and when harm touches you upon the sea, those that you call upon besides Allah, they vanish from you, except for Allah alone. But when Allah brings you to safety, to the land, you turn away from Him, and man is ever ungrateful. Allah mentions in other ayat, for those who are in the sea, and the stormy wind comes, and the waves are coming from all sides, and the people are encircled by them, then they invoke, they invoke Allah. Then they turn to Allah. It's not just for those who are in the sea. Take knowledge, take wisdom from these examples that Allah gave us. For anyone in any hardship, in any hardship that they're in the crux of that hardship, whether stuck in the middle of the ocean or stuck in their home around their family and their friends. They're in a state of hardship. They call upon Allah because of that hardship. And they say, Oh Allah, if you deliver us out of this, if you save us from this, we'll be of those who are truly grateful. But when He delivered them, behold, they rebel. They disobey Allah and the earth wrongfully. O mankind, your rebellion, your disobedience to Allah is only against your own selves. Ya ayyuhannas, innama baghiyakum ala anfusikum. 
It is only against yourselves. أقول قلي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إذ الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam. At the beginning of the khutbah, we mentioned the hadith of Hanzala going to the Prophet ﷺ saying that I've become a hypocrite because when I'm with you, it's as if Jannah and Jahannam are right in front of me and I see them, but I'm not. when I'm not with you, I attend to my family, I attend to my children, I attend to my wife, I attend to my business, and I am not thinking about the Akhirah like I should. And he said, Hanzala sa'a wa sa'a, sa'a wa sa'a, sa'a wa sa'a, time, give time for your worldly affairs. For your wife, your children, for the women, for their husbands, for their children, for their brothers and sisters and sons, for their family, for their business. Give the time for this. But then you have to give that time for your ibadah. Unfortunately, many of us have become slaves of our desires. Allah SWT, He said, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهُمْ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلُّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah in Surah Al-Jafiyah, He says what means, Have you seen him who takes his desires, his own lusts, as his God? And to many of us, we worship the dollar more than we worship Allah. We worship someone we love more than we worship Allah. Some worship their children more than they worship Allah. Some worship their desires and fulfilling them more than they worship Allah. Have you seen the one who takes his desires as his ilah, as his God? And Allah knowing him as such, he left him astray. He sealed his hearing. He sealed his heart. He put a cover on his sight. Who will then guide him after Allah? Will you then not remember? This was a warning. Bishr ibn al-Harith, rahimahullah, he said, لا تجد حلاوة العبادة حتى تجعل بينك وبين الشهوات سدة. Bishr ibn al-Harith, rahimahullah, he said, you will not sedda, you will not attain the sweetness of worship until you place a barrier between yourself and your desires. You will not taste that sweetness of worship. Remember, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the hadith of al-Barza, Abu Barza al-Aslami, rahimahullah, who narrated from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن علمه فيما فعل وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه ومما أنفقه وعن جسمه فيما أبلاه This hadith which is sahih in the sunnah of the Tirmidhi and Shaykh Al-Bani he authenticated it The Prophet ﷺ said the feet of the slave of Adam the, عفواً, the slave of Allah of Bani Adam the servants of Allah your feet will not move on the day of resurrection until you're asked about five things. About your life. How did you live it? What did you do with it? Was it all about dunya? And the akhirah was way in the back of your mind? Did you at least balance the two as was the advice of the Prophet ﷺ? How did you live your life? About his knowledge, what he did with it. The knowledge that you get from Jum'ah to Jum'ah. In the authentic books that inshallah you're reading or looking through in the tafsir of the Quran so you can implement the ayat and not just say hafaz or hafaz that I just memorized and I memorized that you actually know what you've memorized and you try to implement those ayat the knowledge that you have what did you do with that knowledge did you benefit yourself with it your family with it others with it about your wealth you'll be asked two questions number three and number four where did you get your wealth from was it from haram? Was it from cheating, from lying, from deceiving, from inflating? Was it from selling what is haram? From alcohol or drugs, from engaging in gambling and the likes of these? And then what will be asked will also be, where did you spend your wealth? It's fine. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in authentic hadith, he said, you're entitled to a spacious home. You're entitled to a nice ride. You're entitled to these things. But where also do you spend your money? Do you want to face Allah where you just kept feeding your desires and your wants and what you need, what you thought you wanted? 
what you thought would bring you happiness in this life. So you'll be asked about your wealth in those two ways, and you will be asked about your body and how did you wear it out. How did you wear your body out? What made you get so tired that your back couldn't bend anymore for ruku'a properly? What made you so tired that you have to pray sitting now in those older days or younger days? What makes you get to that point where your body is worn out, torn up? Is it sports? Is it chasing the, the, the desires you wanted because you went from the end of the earth to the end of the earth just to fulfill those desires, whether they were sexual ones or whatever it may be? Or did you serve in the path of Allah in a way that it tired your body, it wore out your muscles, it wore out your bones, it wore down your cartilage between your bones to the point where you broke your body down for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did you use your body and how did you wear it down? There comes a point where we have to say enough is enough. We have to hear it. We have to stop being lazy. Because in essence, this is laziness. We're so excited, we'll get up at 3 in the morning to go to the airport to go on a trip. But you try and get up for Fajr, you will make one sub, one line, if that. We all complain about the little things Allah commands us to do and how much time we, get, we don't get for ourselves or for this dunya, yet the reality is clear. Where is the time for Allah? He didn't even ask for us to spend all of our minutes in worship, in ibadah. Yet we still find a way to come up with this unequal proportion and yet still complain about what Allah asks us to do. Where is the equal hours? Like I said, keep a listing. Okay, I'll watch TV for two hours, let's say. Where's your two hours of ibadah? If you want to be fair. If you really want to put a balance and a scale, like we'll come out on the Day of Judgment to weigh our good and our bad deeds. There's no cheating in this. Give time to Allah, to the Qur'an. We mentioned in the brief mentioning on uh, Wednesday night after Salat al-Isha, we have a reminder. And it was about how the Prophet ﷺ would always have a hizb of Qur'an that you, you should read every night. And if you sleep because you're tired or you're sick, then you make it up the next day between Fajr and Dhuhr. And if you didn't make it up at that time, then you should do it, combine it with the hizb for the next night. And this doesn't have to be a whole juzuk. Tell yourself, I'm going to read one page a day. One page of the Qur'an a day. Where is the dedication? Give time to Allah. Give time to the Qur'an. Give time to seeking ilm, to seeking knowledge. Inshallah, in September, we're starting second, fourth Sunday between Maghrib and Isha to have the halaqat, to get back into seeking some knowledge. We know the virus is still here, we'll take the precautions. But we have to get the ilm. Talab al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim. The seeking of knowledge is a faridah. It's an obligation on you. You can't say, oh, I didn't get the knowledge. No, you have it. It's in front of you. It's at your disposal. You're choosing not to get it. Give time to learning the sunnah. Give time to your ibadah, especially amud al-islam, as-salah. Give time to your salah. This is the pillar of Islam. Don't rush the fatiha. Don't rush the ruku'ah. Don't rush the sujood, which you are in that position, you're the closest to Allah. Aqrabu ma yakun al-abd min rabbihi wa huwa sajid. Fa'akthir du'a As we mentioned the hadith many times, the closest a slave is to Allah is when he is in sajda. Fa'akthir du'a Make du'a in sajda. Don't make it something you rush. Give time to the masjid. Time to helping out the masajid. We're wrapping it up, inshallah. We ask for a freeway cleanup, which will be a, a week from tomorrow. Next Saturday, not tomorrow. Look at how large the community is. Now, because of COVID, and a lot of people are concerned, they're staying away. But on Eid, we saw 1,500 people on Eid al-Fitr. And we get six, seven out for the freeway cleanup. Are you too good to be out there? Are you above being someone who has to pick up trash? This is something, without a doubt, that does help change the minds in some way, at least for peace and security, of some of the ignorant people. It does. Because I've witnessed it. We want to set up conferences. We want to set up things like this. But the manpower, quote-unquote, is so weak, it's pathetic and sad. So then we don't go through with it, because it can't all fall on two or three people. Yet we have many able young brothers and sisters who could help. And they don't have to be young. Many of the elderly brothers and sisters, they would come to the salah 
on days on a cane, limping, back, bent, can't even straighten it, they would be two out of the four people in the line for the prayer. And many young, abled ones can come, drive on their own, not have to walk here, all those other things, and they're sitting at home during a prayer time. Give time to helping the masajid, time to helping those in need from the brothers and sisters, time to giving da'wah, especially with your good character and manners. The excuses we give, they're old, they're pathetic, and we need to step up to being true people who fulfill this hadith of sa'a bisa'a. Not just claim, oh, I give my time to my ibadah and to my dunya. This is a false claim that many of us, including myself, we utter. If you really want to have a true balance. Let us balance what Allah has given us, do as much as we can in terms of ibadah, and give the rights to our wives, our families, our businesses. But let's make sure that balance remains. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب المجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين